If I told you that you can invest in the next Amazon and there's an international stock that really is following the footprints. Now, I've, I've been in Amazon for a while. It's my top holding, so I know the company very well. If I told you there was an international company that could be the next Amazon, would you want to hear more? That's exactly what we're going to do today. If you remember last week, we started a new series. So what I did last week is I started a series on the top 10 global international e-commerce stocks. And these are non-US based stocks. And what I did is I covered the top 10. I asked for the community to drop comments and drop comments of the stocks they are most interested in where they would want deeper dive due diligence. So this is the first deep dive of the series. This is gonna be on Mercado Libre, ticker Melly. You're gonna to wanna to see this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we'll look at the international growth metrics, the macroeconomics to say, well, what does it look like in terms of Internet usage and growth throughout the world? Because that's going to be important for this entire series for all the different companies we're looking at, because North America has high Internet usage already. But what about other countries? What does that look like and where are their opportunities for growth? So you think of Africa, you think of Asia, you think of South America. There's lots of opportunity for growth. A lot of people that don't use the Internet, a lot of people that are unbanked, that don't have banks. And so what technology could really help these companies get to the next level and really have that accelerated growth with usage and more people using the internet. The first thing that comes to mind is low orbit satellites for satellite internet. So you think of like Starlink, you think of Amazon with their satellite internet, both of these and, and others, China's working on one as well. These are going to be huge opportunities for companies like Mercado Libre, like C Limited and others. So let's look at that first, because it's going to be important for Melly, but it's going to be important for these other stocks as well. So let's do a screen share and look at some of the data. All right, guys, jumping right into it. Let's look at total Internet users worldwide. Now, these numbers are always estimates, and there's a little bit of contradicting information from the first slide I show you in the next slide or the first picture I show you in the next picture, but it gives you a really good idea of what's going on globally. So it says 4.93 billion people use the internet worldwide, 63% of the global population. So there's, there's quite a bit of room to, to grow that, but of course you have to be realistic because there's some parts of the world that are very remote, hard to get infrastructure to. And that's where I think the low orbit internet, the satellite internet could play a big part. It's still not gonna ever give you 100%, but it can definitely increase these numbers substantially. So right now, North America, it shows here about 7.2%. And you got Latin America, Caribbean, which is, you know, Latin America is what we're focused on today with Mercado Libre. That's 9.5% or 468 million. You've got Europe around 14.8%. Look at Africa at 12.8. So we'll probably get to Jamia. That's 632 million. There's wait till you see the next, the next slide or the next picture here on Africa, because it's pretty impressive. Asia, you got 51.8%. That's about 2.6 billion. And then Australia, 0.6%, 29 million. So this one's showing us world internet usage and population statistics. This is 2021 year Q1 estimates. Again, these numbers are estimates, but I think they're, they're helpful and they give you a good ballpark of what's going on. So you've got your world regions in the far left. You got Asia, Europe, so on. The population, you got the population percentage of the world. Internet users as of March 31st, 2021. So this is very relevant and recent information. You got the penetration rate population, which I think is the most important stat probably on here. And then the growth and then the internet world. So you can see the growth numbers are crazy in some of these. Now, what's interesting about this, if you look at the penetration rate population, so look at Africa, this is showing 43.2%. And obviously there's a lot of places in Africa that are very hard to get to. You're going to need, if anything, you're going to need a satellite type internet system to make it work. So that could be huge. And that's going to take time. And there are, there are companies we're going to get to here in a minute. But you think of Starlink, you think of Amazon. I know China's working on their own satellite internet and there's others around the world doing the same. So Asia, 63.8%. That's important when we're thinking of Alibaba, C Limited, so on. You look at Latin America, Right now it says 75% and that's penetration rate for percentage of population. So it's showing that you basically could get another, you know, maximum of 24% or so. North America is 93.9%. So even if you say, well, Latin America might not get to 94 quickly, maybe use, 
you know, a 90% or something like that, you still have about a 15% rate. And when you look at the population, the number of internet users and the total population, there's quite a bit of run rate there. Africa is the one that really stick, sticks out, stands out in terms of population and the opportunity there. So Jamia is gonna be on this series as well. There's some key reasons why I like Melly as kind of like the next Amazon. Some people call Africa the next, or Jumia the next you know, Amazon of Africa. The problem that you have to recognize and the thing you have to be careful with is that Amazon, their cash cow has been Amazon Web Services. And so it's, you can't really compare any of these companies. The only one that really comes close is Alibaba because Alibaba has cloud services out of the top 10 that we're covering. So when you think of Melly, what can replace that Amazon Web Services to be the cash cow? I think I have the answer and I'll get more to that later in the video. Before we do that, let's look at Starlink. Let's look at Amazon, see what's going on with this low orbit satellite internet. Okay, so this article is five ways low orbit satellites will impact Asia and the Pacific. Now, this is obviously relevant when you think of Sea Limited, you think of Alibaba, you think of those, right? But if you read this article, it's really talking about how it'll make the internet global. So it does really relate to all the stocks that we're going to talk about. You know, thousands of new low orbit satellites are planned for the skies above Asia and the Pacific. The way this works, though, is these satellites are all, you know, across the globe. So if, it, if it's going to work in, in Asia, it's going to work in South America. It's really going to be able to work anywhere. So tens of billions of dollars in private investment, et cetera. It talks about remote and rural communities in Asia and Pacific really globally struggle. They still struggle with poor Internet connectivity. New low Earth orbit satellites may change the game, especially for landlocked developing countries and small island developing states. So if you look at this, it talks about, this is kind of a cool graphic here. So global coverage will make high-speed connectivity a reality even in remote regions. So again, global coverage, it's everywhere. And it says, because LEO, LEO satellites orbit at altitudes of less than 2,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface, they circle the planet several times a day. As a result, each constellation requires hundreds or thousands of satellites blanketing the entire globe to provide continuous connectivity for any given area. By contrast, traditional satellites are predominantly positioned, you know, basically they don't work the same way, right? So if you look at this, you can see kind of a, an idea. So geo satellites, the altitude is 35,786 kilometers, full orbital period of 24 hours. There's latency, right? So these LEO, these low orbit satellites will give you low latency and they're about 160 to 2,000 kilometer altitudes, the full orbital period for the Earth instead of 24 hours on the geosatellite is now 88 to 127 minutes. That's a big difference. So that latency round trip, it goes from 477 to 2 to, 2 to 27 MS. So that's, that's pretty good. You know, you're taking it from 470, 477 to 2 to 27. That's, that's massive, actually. So Low latency will actually help. So they're saying you'll be able to stream, you'll be able to play online games. And it might not be as good as, you know, a cable connection, but for satellite internet, it's going to change the game. It's also going to improve internet quality. It's going to expand applications and services that can be used. Competition should reduce broadband prices. So it'll help lower the prices, which will allow more people to be able to afford it. So the people that do have access to broadband that might not be able to afford it now, maybe they can subscribe because it's lower price. It can also improve network infrastructure resilience for regions prone to natural disasters because, you know, obviously if it's a satellite, you can't take it out with a hurricane or something like that. And then expanding constellations and increasingly affordable rocket launches are benefiting other space technologies and services as well. This technology as a whole is going to help the globe, help mankind. It's going to help a lot of these technologies, a lot of these growth companies that we invest in. It's going to help really take them to the next level. All right, guys, I hope these videos are helpful. If they are, give me a thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the little bell to get notifications. So Mercado Libre, let's jump into it. So we know that there's a lot of opportunity for growth. We know that global satellites, you know, that low orbit satellites are going to help make it more available. But what? let's talk about the business model. What is Mercado Libre? What is Meli all about? Well, first and foremost, do you know what Mercado Libre means in Espanol and in Spanish? It means, of course, free market. So when you look at this, there's a pie chart here and it's showing you all the pieces of the puzzle that make Mercado Libre. And you might be surprised to see all the components that actually put the puzzle together, right? So on the top left, you've got the yellow, 
that marketplace. So sellers pay commissions on successful transactions equal to a percentage of the value of an item. Okay, they also call it GMV. You've got their logistic solutions. A lot of people don't talk about this part of the business and it's hard to see that green, but it's Mercado Envios, E-N-V-I-O-S. It says a partnership with leading carriers and logistics partners to provide efficient and reliable logistic solutions like drop shipping, cross docking, and fulfillment. Next, you've got Mercado Credito. That's the bottom left where you see credits. It's kind of that limish green, kind of the color of my shirt, I guess. What is that? A teal color. Teal green. Credit solutions provide cash advances and working capital loans to professional sellers and loans to Mercado Libre buyers. The top right, you got that red color is SAS and ERP. Well, hey, I like that. What's going on? So sellers pay to set up and basically pay for maintenance to have storefronts powered by Mercado shops. So when you think of things like Shopify, it's similar to that, you know? So they've got a lot of different components. You think of, it's kind of like a, a blend of a lot of different companies, you know, like a Square, PayPal. In fact, I've got some information that you're going to want to hear later in the video about a partnership that a lot of people don't talk about. When you see these deep dives, you don't hear this very often. And it's probably a stock that you own that actually is invested in Mercado Libre. So stay tuned for that. So next you see the FinTech services. And I think this is going to be critical because we talked earlier about how Amazon has Amazon Web Services. What can really replace that? Because they need some sort of cash cow. You can't just rely on on selling things online. Mercado Pago, that's gonna be their broad offering of financial services, including payments processing, gateways, services, mobile payments, credits, and cards. And again, stay tuned later, I'm gonna talk more about this. And then advertisement, which is something, again, that you don't really think much about, and Amazon's getting more into this too, but, so you actually have advertising. So advertisers promote their brands and products within the Mercado Libre marketplace, and they pay a CPC basis for product ads and on CPM basis for display banners, similar to how YouTube does, does their advertising. So you've got really these six key components that make this puzzle, this pie chart, and they're all really important to the business and it's important to understand all of them because it's not just e-commerce, it has all these other pieces to it. All right, next let's talk about last quarter earnings. So the most recent earnings report, there's a, a lot of key information on here that I think is important as an investor to understand kind of where they've been and where they're going. I think these are really important numbers. So net revenues reached 1.4 billion. That's an increase year over year of 158.4%. Their gross profit was 591.4 million, and that's a 42.9% margin. Income from operations was $90.8 million. Net income before taxes was $9.5 million. Net loss was $34 mil. Total payment volume, they call it TPV, reached $14.7 billion, up 129.2% year over year. Now, the unique active users reached $69.8 million, about $70 million active users. That was up 61.6% year over year. And Mercado Envios, we talked about this, the drop shipping, right? So that part of the business shipped over 200 million items, and that was up 130.7% year over year. Mercado Pago, TPV, reached 14.7 billion. That's an increase of 81.8% year over year in US dollars. Mobile Wallet delivered 2.9 billion in TPV, almost 200% growth year over year. Now, this is getting important because we're talking about the FinTech component, which I think is gonna be a key driver for them. You're seeing almost a 200% growth year over year in that mobile wallet. I think this is huge. So Mercado Fondo, this is another part of the business that deals with management, right? So management of assets. That it relies on over 650 million AUM assets under management, while Mercado Credito portfolio has reached 576 million. That's over 200% year over year growth. So this back, goes back into that whole financial component. So basically like a, a digital bank, and they're doing everything. It's not just the credit card part of it, it's everything. So this, this is gonna be really important for the growth of Mercado Libre. And Melly invested $7 million in Bitcoin, which I thought was interesting, I thought I'd share. Okay, more facts on Melly. So largest online commerce and payments ecosystem in Latin America. Again, it covers 18 countries, including Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, Colombia, Chile, Venezuela, and Peru. Now, of course, there's risk to some of these, these countries, right? There's instability in some of the governments, inflation, things like that. So definitely something to consider. I know some people don't invest in Mercado Libre because of that. 
So trust me, that's definitely a concern, but I'll get more later towards the closing remarks of what I think about the company overall and how they can overcome some of those hurdles. So there's always going to be challenges. There's always going to be risk in any investment. And that's probably the biggest risk with Mercado Libre is really to think about these, these you know, countries. Some of them have instability, inflation, things like that. So Melly, again, market leader in each of the major countries they represent. We'll talk more about competition later as well, such as C Limited. They're starting to hire more in Brazil and they're going into a couple other countries we'll talk about later. So stay tuned for that. So the population in Latin America is 635 million and we've shown different stats and there's variances depending on the source, but you get an idea of the general estimate, right? 70 million users approximately right now on Melly platform. Revenue growth, again, increased 158%. 67.92 billion market cap. So when I did this video, it was right in that 67, uh, $68 billion market cap, give or take. Revenue last quarter, $1.38 billion. It's under a 10 Ford price to sales, which, you know, it's not a software company. So you, you're not necessarily, you know, loving that valuation. It's certainly not an inexpensive stock. Okay. And it has come back a lot, which is helpful, but many would argue, especially if you're more of a value investor, would argue that it probably needs to go a lot lower still before they would invest into it. They're not profitable, but they're trending towards being profitable. And Melly's commerce business, plus 100% growth and items sold in the platform. We talked about some of the numbers earlier. The merchandise volume increased 114% year over year. The business continues to bring in new users at a rapid rate. This is important. So the unique active users increased approximately 62% year over year. And it was just under 70 million users. We've seen that number a couple of times. But it's important because we're trying to grow that user number. So Melly's commerce revenues, two-thirds of net revenue from the recent quarter, which is $900, $911 million dollars grew 188% year over year, and that's on a constant currency basis. Now, the smaller and emerging fintech business increased 117% year over year to 468 million. Mercado Pago payment volume increased 130% with payment transactions up 115% year over year. So Mercado Credito, their lending and credit portfolio doubled in size year over year to $576 million. And Mercado Fondo increased the AUM assets under management to 650 million. It has about 16 million users now across Latin America, and there's a lot of room for growth on that part of the business. And they have plenty of room. We talked about it for internet access growth and adoption. So that's going to be huge, growing that internet access to different regions, rural areas, and then the adoption, using it more and more. So it's one thing to have access to the internet, but then you have to adopt it actually become in the habit of using it all the time. So it's a combination of those two things. There's existing people that use the internet, but haven't fully adopted to use it. And there's also people that don't have internet access. There's also a lot of people in Latin America and South America that don't have access to banks. So they call it unbanked, which is why I think the FinTech opportunity is massive. 70%, in fact, of adults are unbanked. So FinTech, for me, I think is a huge component because... That's a lot of total addressable market. 70% are unbanked in Latin America. That's a big, big number. Approximately 10 years. So this is where we start to get into some comparisons uh, to Amazon. And it's never going to be a perfect comparison. I'm not necessarily saying that it has to be the next Amazon, but it's fun to kind of make that comparison and see where it could go. So Latin America is about 10 years behind the U.S. in terms of e-commerce purchase rates. Okay, so we talked again about the growth also the adoption. It's currently around 4% of where the U.S. was 10 years ago. So 4% is not a very big number. And it's interesting if you look at Amazon 10 years ago and you look at Melly, where it's at now, you know, Amazon Web Services right now, it's about 20% of net sales. So of course, we're never going to be, Mercado Libre is never going to be Amazon because it does not have Amazon Web Services. So we have to take that into consideration. Now, if you look at the market caps of Amazon and Melly, and I'm going to show you a site here in a second, we're going to look at some numbers. Okay, so I'm on Macro Trends. It's a free site. You can go on here and play around yourself. I'm going to show you the market caps of Amazon and Melly. My, my camera is going to go away, so you can focus on the screen here in a second. But let's just take a look, and I'll give you some thoughts here. So when you look at the Amazon market cap, okay? So right now, of course, it's got this huge market cap. It's somewhere around $1.6 trillion. And you say, well, how can Melly ever become the next Amazon? 
it's only like a sixty-five billion dollar market cap, Eric. So what you know, what are you smoking? <laughs> so you look at this, right? And I've been invested in Amazon for a long time, and I've always believed in it. Now, the main reason I'm invested in Amazon has been Amazon Web Services. So I'm going to need a, a catalyst of why I'd want to invest in you know Mercado, Mercado Libre, because just the e-commerce part alone is not enough. When I think of C Limited, you know, you've got the 300 monster. I, I want that diversity because I think that's where a lot of the growth comes from. In fact, C Limited uses their gaming to kind of grow into Shopee, and they're very good at that. So when you think of Amazon, and we go back, let's just go back to, you know, when they were about $65 billion. So if you look at this on your screen, so September 13, 2010. So September 13, 2010. So this was about 11 years ago or so, right? Not quite 11 years yet, right? So 10 and a half years, whatever the number is. They were about the same value as what Melly is now. And they went from 66 billion or so to 1.6 trillion. Now I'm not saying that Melly will be 1.6 trillion in 10 years, but I think it's possible that they could get to a trillion dollars. I think that they could even do a 10X from 65 billion and it, it, you know, it'd only be um, $650 billion, which is still amazing growth. But I think it's possible that they get to a trillion dollar market cap over the next decade, say by 2030, 2031, somewhere in there. Now, nothing's a guarantee. But if you look at the run rate and you look at the adoption, you think of, you know, if, if Amazon 10 years ago, some of the numbers that I just showed you in the last slide, rewind if you want to go look at those numbers, I think they're mind boggling, 4%, right? So if that adoption accelerates and they find a catalyst, like a cash cow, like a, re it's never going to replace Amazon Web Services, but even if they can replace it by, you know, 50%, we're given a, a, a $600 billion leeway from Amazon's growth to only go to a trillion dollars. Is it a stretch? Yeah, maybe it is a little bit, but is it unrealistic that it could be a 10X stock over 10 years? It's not unrealistic. Even if it failed, even if it failed and it only did half of that, it would still be a five bagger from here. So is Melly expensive right now? Yes. Are there risks to the stock, including you know geopolitical, macroeconomic, inflation? Yes. Is it a guarantee that it's going to be a multi-bagger? No. When you look at the opportunities that are in the market and you look at the potential for growth, this one stands out to me as a gem where you're going to have some risk always. You're going to do your due diligence. You're going to put the money in the stock. You're going to do your due diligence and you're going to constantly watch the company grow. And if the story changes, you can you know, sell and get out and, and go a different direction. But this definitely has opportunity for us to, to make money. And if you look at this, you know, they were actually up to close to $100 billion in market cap. They got to $97.99 billion on January 18, 2021, so earlier this year. And they've, they've crashed, really, from that $100 billion market cap range down to the $65 billion. So that's a pretty significant haircut. Of course, it was way ahead of itself, and it ran really hard. This is just parabolic straight up. So what's the answer? You know, does it need to come down more? That's always the hard part. But look at, you know, these guys started... Their IPO was in 2007. It was about a billion dollars. And, you know, it took a little while to grow. So in three years, they doubled, you know, and now you've got four billion. So if you, I mean, if you would have got in any time here, it's just been kind of a steady upward pace. Now, this is where it kind of just went nuts. They had some partnerships. I'm going to talk about one of those partnerships here in a second that kind of was part of the catalyst, I think, here. And people started really getting attention around this 2019 period. There's a reason for that. And I'm going to show you here. <laughs> Check out some of these pictures of the kids. These are funny. These are my girls here. They're crazy. They're fun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Just having fun with the kids, but okay, let's get back into it. So there I am. I'm back. So in 2019, PayPal invested $750 million into Mercado Libre. Now, this was back in 2019, and the stock really started to kind of take off. There was probably a lot of different catalysts, but I definitely think this helped because PayPal started investing. They put some money into it. So essentially, they're partners. So PayPal and Melly are actually partners. And so if you look at this, it's actually really interesting. So digital commerce in Latin America is experiencing tremendous growth, and Mercado Libre is well-positioned for continued leadership. 
This is from Dan Schulman, president and CEO of PayPal in a statement. We've been impressed with the digital commerce and payments ecosystem that Marcos and his team has built. We see great opportunities to integrate our respective capabilities to create unique and valuable payment experiences for our combined 500 million customers throughout the region and the world. This is pretty good stuff. So the two have already worked together and the financial commitment PayPal is making here not only will help reap dividends from Mercado Libre's business growth, but also ensure that it integrates even more of its features in prominent ways to drive the transaction on its own rails. And given how payments is actually more localized than many people might assume, it also gives the company a direct pipeline into tracking and catering to consumer and merchant tastes and preferences when it comes to buying and selling goods and related financial services. So here's a quote. Over the past 20 years, we have heavily invested in developing e-commerce and fintech ecosystem in Latin America, says Marcos, the CEO of Mercado Libre. We are excited to welcome these investments, which will allow us to significantly accelerate our growth. Yes. We look forward to accelerating our leadership in e-commerce and payments and foster financial inclusion in Latin America as a result of our alliance with global leader in the industry, such as PayPal. So essentially, PayPal and Melly are partners, and PayPal has even invested $750 million. So you might be an investor in PayPal and didn't even know that you know your company invested in Mercado Libre in 2019. If you did, good on you. I don't think a lot of people know this. It's not something that's talked about a lot. When you, when you read deep dives, watch other videos, I don't, I don't see anybody talking about how PayPal and Melly partnered together and how PayPal's actually invested into Mercado Libre's business. So when you dig into it more, you know, here's, this is from April 30, 2021. So this is you know, pretty new information. PayPal upbeat about 2021 prospects. And so this talks about PayPal, one of the world's largest fintechs. And I'm long on PayPal and I like this company too. And so this article really goes into detail about kind of their current status. So customers who open accounts with PayPal realize there are areas where it is very convenient. Okay. Last year, PayPal handled $936 billion in payment volume on a neutral currency basis. Alliances. So this is talking about the alliance again. So PayPal has forged multiple alliances to add value to its offer. Last year, it integrated Melly into a global alliance that allows Mercado Pago users to carry out transactions globally through PayPal. This is really huge for both companies. Mercado Libre is a strategic partner and we see an area of joint opportunity. So right here, the company expects growth in Latin America trade and Mercado Libre is an ideal ally to capture this opportunity. Huge opportunity for both companies, but this right here, in my opinion, strengthens the bull thesis for Melly. All right, so my closing remarks, and I've got some notes here too, so I'll be looking up and down. But of course, when I do a video like this, I could spend you know hours going deeper and there's gonna be things that are left out, but I think these are really the, the highest level, the most important reasons why you'd have conviction on the stock, okay? So I'm definitely bullish on it. I know there's some risk to this. I think the biggest risk probably to Melly is going to be that geopolitical that I talked about earlier. Of course, competition's also a risk too because there's a lot of different players in the space, even Amazon in certain capacities. But one that a lot of people like to talk about and I think is important is, is C Limited because a lot of people are invested in both. A lot of people that are invested in C Limited are probably invested in Melly and a lot of them might like Coupang and so on. So 18% of C limited revenue is in Latin America, which I think a lot of people would be surprised by that number. And it's a number you probably don't see very often. So 18% of C limited revenue is already from Latin America right now. Okay. Now this is led, this is the key thing to focus on. Cause I think there's confusion if you don't understand what's underneath the hood. So this, this 18% is led almost primarily by Garena. And their Free Fire game. Free Fire is a huge game globally, and that's where a lot of their revenue comes from. Now, what they've done a good job of is they use that platform, they use Free Fire game to advertise Shopee and to try to push the other lines of business. And it's been a successful model for them. But they're not coming in as e commerce, they're coming in from their Free Fire game and they're trying to basically gain trust and, and gain exposure from that, right? So it's a little bit different. 
Now, they're currently ramping up their expansion in Brazil. They've been in Brazil. See, Limited's been in Brazil for a little while. They've been there since 2019, and they're hiring you know, dozen more employ- dozens more employees to ramp up their facility there. So we don't really have clarity into exactly what that means, but we do know that Sea Limited has plans to expand in different parts. So right now, they're really focused in Brazil, and they're also in Mexico. Now, this is something brand new in 2021. Earlier this year, they, uh, they, they started Mexico and just started a Mexico website literally a couple months back. And a lot of people don't know about that yet either. Now, Mercado Libre has a strong veteran management team, been there for a long time. And they do have, in my opinion, tremendous advantages in core infrastructure investments. We talked a couple of quotes earlier, mentioned those strategic investments. You know, it doesn't mean that anybody else can't come in and make those investments as well, but it is a barrier of entry because you do have to spend the money in order to be successful. And they've, you know, they've been doing this for a long time. You know, their IPO is back in, you know, 2007. And they've been grinding at this for you know, a really long time. So one could argue, this is something that I wrote up here. You could argue the competition could bring more attention to e-commerce in the area and to Latin America. And that Melly could actually benefit from having competitors like you know, C-Limited there. That they could actually still win the majority of the new business. And that you know, C-Limited actually could bring exposure into e-commerce and actually help Melly grow in that way. So I, I think both companies will be successful. I think it's something to keep an eye on as an investor. I'm not writing it off by any means. Um, but I do think there's, there, there's still a lot of competitive advantages that Melly has and that both can still do well. And they're targeted a little bit differently too. Again, that FinTech component for me seems to be one of the easiest ways for them to expand and to make money. That's that's my opinion, and that's one of the reasons that I'm interested in investing. Now, I currently don't own any shares of Melly, but it is on my radar to add shares. I'd love to see the stock closer to $1,200. I don't know if I'll get that or not. I mean, of course, I'd love to see it lower, but I'd like to see it around that range. I'm watching it very closely. We're kind of having you know, a pretty good week for growth, so it's hard to say what's going to happen with, with the stock. And C Limited, you know, again, going back to C Limited in, in Latin America, it's, it's a threat regardless. And I do own shares of C Limited, so it's not necessarily a bad thing if, if they do well, because I've been long that company since last summer, thanks to our Singapore friends and the Fired Up Wealth community. And if you are interested, check out Patreon. We've got a, a, a Discord, a private community, and we'd welcome you to, to join us there. Um, I think both will be long-term winners for different reasons. For Melly, I, again, I think FinTech could be their cash cow to replace sort of replace the Amazon Web Services, kind of have their own unique cash cow, so to speak, I think, and growth machine. And just like Amazon has AWS as their cash cow and their growth engine, Melly could do something similar with the FinTech part. And I think that's, that's going to be the, the leader for their future growth. So I hope this video is helpful. Now we're going to do more of these videos. So subscribe to the channel because we're just getting started with this series and we're just getting started with the channel. The channel just celebrated its two year anniversary and I do thank you very much for the support. If you don't know me, I retired uh, last year, November to focus on this full time and it's been a really exciting and fun journey and I appreciate all the support on YouTube and the various platforms. So, you know, do hit the like button, subscribe, check out the other platforms. We've got Twitter, We've got all of them, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Check out the Patreon. There are different tiers for different budgets. Love to have you there. And I want to thank you for the last video because it had the most comments of, I think, any video for the number of views I've had. So it was off the charts. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for your support. I hope this video is helpful. I appreciate your time and attention. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.